Hey and welcome again and this time we are going to take a look on exercise 2 of our Kamunda Platform 8 Code Studio. So in the first two episodes we get it started, we introduced you to this kind of workshop, to the series. We also elaborated very quickly about what the heck is Kamunda 8 and afterwards in the next one we then discussed um, how to model a process for the hypothetical zombie virus and now we are going to go and elaborate about how you can yeah, create a cluster in Kamuna Platform 8, how you can add some API credentials, where you can find all the tools necessary, so on and so forth. So let me go to the console together with you. So the console is kind of the entry point to the SaaS offering of Kamuna Platform 8. And there we do have the clusters tab. Within the clusters tab, you can already see that I do have two different clusters running, one demo cluster and another test cluster. So to show you how easy it is to set up a new cluster, you can just create one, add a cluster name, for instance, another cluster. Let's make this small. We can choose like the latest stable version, go for Kamunda um, 8 or ZB8 and we can only, as of now, choose the region Europe West where this cluster is hosted. So let's create one and now you can see that it's being created, that that can take some time, so maybe reserve like five minutes when you do this. Um, and stepping in there I can see all my applications which are now being created. Um, I can take a look or it right away warns me that no client is configured so if i do want to create new api credentials i can do so right here we'll do this later on once this is configured having the cluster created we can now check on all the applications so they display here right there that they are healthy we can now launch operate task list and optimize so let's do so for now stepping into operate yeah, operate opens and I can see that currently no processes are deployed. Do have my dashboard here, can take a look at the processes, scenes none exist, nothing is shown here and the same applies to the decisions. Going back to our console, I could also open up task list, which is done or which is used for working on user tasks. So for instance, the clerk in our showcase does work in here. And of course we don't have any task at the moment, but we are going to create one or some in the next exercise. Back to, to console and last but not least, there's our beloved optimized tool, which simply lets or allows you to create collection um, based on processes. So that's basically a demo process in here. So we can open this, create a new dashboard for instance, and yeah, go for this for instance, creating this. And we do have some wonderful um, information displayed in here right away. So that's the power of Optimize, but we are going to create some analysis later on explicitly for our HZV quarantine process. Let's take another quick look into the console, what we can see here in our cluster view. So as mentioned, there are our beloved applications we've run through. There are some metrics shown in here, some alerts can be configured. But most importantly, and this will be needed for exercise four, so I will show you twice, right here you can configure client credentials. So whenever you want to connect to Kamunda 8 as a SaaS offering, you do need client credentials. So for instance, having a Java, having a .NET client, we, we need to create some kind of credential. So let's say test credentials, creating them. And there you do have like the cluster URL, the client ID, and very important, the client secret. So you can download the credentials. You do have a little text file. You can open this one in order to, to store them for eternity on your machine and to make sure that you don't lose them because you cannot access the client secret once you have, um, you have downloaded or once you have seen the view I showed you previously. So wonderful. Um, these are the most important things you should need to discover in Kamunda 
um, in the Kamuna Cloud Console in the cluster view. So now it's your time to get started creating a cluster, stepping through the tools, take just a quick look at them and maybe already create some client credentials and download them to your machine. Having that done, um, we are finished with our exercise two. And next up, we are going to talk about designing a process and adding or adding user tasks and forms to our design process in order to really make it deployable. So that's where the magic is happening about adding technical properties, adding some easy user tasks. So we are not going into any concrete automation in here. Rather, we try to, to create a first iteration of our process. But that's a thing which will be covered in our next video. Thanks for watching and see you later. Thank <laughs> you.